Grace Point family, back with you again for our midweek Bible study. Romans chapter 10 is where we're at tonight, so pull your Bibles out. Get ready to uh, to dive into that with us uh, here tonight. Pastor RJ, Marcy uh, with us here, and uh, it's going to be a good, good night. Uh, I thought last week was a lot of fun, talking about uh, lumps of clay and, and uh, how we need to be used by God. And so we're going to get into more of Paul's teaching here, um, and it's it's... It's just good stuff. So we're excited to do that. Um, anything we need to talk about before we jump in? No, no? I can take it. All right. It. All right. Um, yeah, I think we're good. It's been beautiful weather. I know uh, several people, you guys included, have uh, had some <laughs> interesting times because of the weather the last few days. Several other people in the churches have had that as well. And so we want to lift, um, lift our prayers up uh, during this time, you know, tornadoes, thunderstorms, all that stuff. We want to be kept safe. So uh, let's just jump into prayer, and then we'll, we'll get into the study. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for uh, your word and your love that has uh, continued to bring this word to life for us as we dive in every single week and then every single day in our own personal studies. Father God, I pray that you would, that you would be speaking through this, through us, through the video camera, through the, through the TV screen or the, the computer screen or their phone. Father God, however they're, they're taking this in, that, that you would be alive through the power of your spirit in what they hear. God, I, I just I love you so much, and I, I want to lift up some requests to you. I know we have, we have two specific unspoken requests um, from our Bloomfield campus that we know you're working in. I even got a, a testimony today of how good, how well you have answered that unspoken request. So, Father God, and how you're going to continue to work in that, and I just pray that you would you would uh, just work uh, powerfully in the lives of those people. Father God, would you be with again those that are on the front lines? I think of um, Nikki Bachman, who who has had to move to Oskaloosa to continue working at the the care center that she works at, and and two of her daughters who work in the on the on the janitorial staff there. Uh, they've moved to Oskaloosa as well to be able to continue to care for um, those people in that facility. I, I pray, Father, that you would keep them safe uh, throughout all this. Continue to be with Scott Grimm and, and Ryan Miller, Father God, who are who are working on, in hospitals for uh, Jennifer Davidson as a, a pharmacy, uh, working there as, as, as there's still these possibilities of people uh, coming in contact with, with those that are sick. And, Father, I just pray that you would keep people safe. God, we love you. We pray for our church. We pray for our people, uh, that, that those that are dealing with anxiety and depression, that they would continue to give those feelings, those thoughts over to you, that they would seek out people to talk to um, and, and just be able to be encouraged by others, Father, and to be an encouragement themselves. God, I sometimes some of the most down moments of my life, I, I'm lifted up because I've, I've, I wanted to seek out how I could be an encourager uh, through the power of your Holy Spirit, nothing that I've done on my own but everything being led by you and being filled by you. So, Father God, I pray for that, uh, for these people. Uh, just thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us and that we are able to come in and to learn more about you and that you reveal yourself to us. And, Lord, we just um, pray that you continue to work through our minds and our hearts through these lessons. And, Lord, I pray for um, the prayer request in, here in Sheraton, um, we pray for Connie still and, and her family and all that they're going through. Um, we pray for Charlotte and um, we pray for Day as she's in, uh, you know, the situation in the nursing home to where she's, you know, in that front line. Lord, I pray for those others that are in the front line here in Sheraton um, that you just continue to to work with them and to be with them and to show them you're right there with them through this whole situation. And Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you for the protection that you've given um, the people around us right now. And Lord, I just pray that you just continue to, to help um, protect us from this that's going on. And Lord, we just thank you for this. We just thank you for that. And Lord, we just pray that you continue to guide us through these discussions and continue to work on our heart and our mind. Lord, we just pray that you just continue to be with us this upcoming week. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, as I said, Romans chapter 10, and uh, we'll turn it over to Marcy, and she will teach us tonight. Okay, 
So um, we are in Romans 10. Um, and so we're going to start out by reading like the first 13 verses. Um, so Romans uh, 10, 1 through 13. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Man, does that sound like today's world. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, not, I'm just supposed to read. Okay. Christ, verse 4, Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Oh, I want to, I'm, okay. Moses <laughs> writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these, does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. I know, there's some really good points in, <laughs> in this yeah. in this section. Um, and so as you can kind of tell, Paul's still kind of on this, um, the same pattern that he was last week talking about uh, the Jews and Gentiles. But he's kind of shifted who he's talking to because he starts out there, brothers and sisters. Um, so, you know, it's it's the, the, he's no longer talking to just the kin of his flesh you know so he's kind of started out he's kind of same conversation just kind of focusing differently who he's talking well to. he's talking about people who believe in jesus right as the messiah yeah. yeah and so um he said my heart's desire and prayer to god for the israelites is that they may be saved and so we can kind of take um from this um that he believes there's still hope for that, um, that the, it's they're not beyond this point, yeah. You mean God hasn't already determined that someone can't be saved? Is that, is that what you're saying? I am. That, oh wow. <laughs> okay. All right. That's, it's a I can get down with that because <laughs> I think that's I think that's exactly what that means. Like yeah. I, my prayer is that the Israelites will still be saved. Mm -hmm. Is what Paul says there. How and and so many. Oh, okay. I'm gonna calm down. There's so many denominations that believe in predestination and the elect as in God has already deemed who's going where how can Paul even just say that sentence and I just want to read to make sure I'm reading it right my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved okay so he wants them to be saved and he understands that they might not be saved mm -hmm. but he understands that they can be saved right. so like there's no way he can make that sent that statement of that sentence believing that God's already decided what mm -hmm. happens, right? right? He, again, God might know what we're going to decide, what we have the free will to choose, but God does not decide who goes where. Right, right. Yep, yep. That's, and I think that's a good point right there to, to point out, that there there is hope. There is hope in that. And Paul is talking about that right there, that the Israelites have this hope in in coming into you know the a relationship yeah and what i love about that too and, and you're going to get into this in verse two and so i don't want to steal anything away from you but just that that brings it up to my mind too like that these israelites might be saying, these israelites are the people of god mm -hmm. right so they they know god and as we're going to point out in verse two and they're zealous for god doesn't mean they're saved mm -hmm. right and so and he's going to get there and we end this section verse 13 for everyone who calls on the name of the lord jesus will be saved, right? right. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. 
No problem. Well, and just like you, you said, like they're zealous. And so in the commentary, it talked about how zeal, you know, it says, but their zeal is not based on knowledge, uh, that they are zealous for God. Zeal can sometimes be a good thing and it can sometimes be a bad thing. Um, jealousy is more of a bad thing um, that can be described as zeal. Um, and so one of the things I kind of wanted us to think about just a little bit as we're kind of going through this and we're having this conversation about zeal is to check where our zeal is. <laughs> if it's on the right side of things or on the, the good side of things or the bad side of things, you know, as we're, as we're zealous, are we being more of a jealous and angry kind of zeal or are we actually having the correct kind of zeal that we need to have? So this makes me think of uh, Mary and Martha, right? So both zealous for Jesus even in that time, uh, but, but Mary sits at the feet of Jesus and listens to him. Martha, zealous for Jesus, but she's busy doing things, right? And I'm, and I'm, there are some preachers that will go just tear Martha to shreds. Like, you do not want to be a Martha, be a Mary. I think Martha gets a bad rap a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But there is some truth to the fact that sometimes our, our desire for God or our desire for church, our desire for the th things of our youth that we feel good about and want to try to l relive through or we want our kids to live through that just because they bring up good feelings inside of us, right? Like that that's where ze I think zealousness can get bad. Je it can get jealous, which is mm -hmm. terrible. But this, there's this like this middle ground. It's like you're zealous for the things of God, but you're not actually zealous for a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that is, I've seen, I've seen people in churches that just they love church, but they they really have lost their love for Jesus, mm -hmm. and so they fill their time with activity, and that can be problematic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And there, I have just a couple um, quotes from the the commentary by Gray House. It says, Israel's intense, passionate, consuming, and ever, even overwhelming dedication to their law, to their God, and to what they believed to be as a righteous cause, a good thing, had become perverted and misdirected into violent persecution of violators of the law. As Paul knew from personal experience, Israel defended its law by killing rather than loving their neighbors. I mean, it's spot on. I mean, it's, we, we, we feel like if we can stop people from breaking the law of God, then that somehow makes us right with God, and that's not just not the case. Mm -hmm. We have to have a relationship with God. And then when we get the relationship internally, we start to see and experience that change that leads us out of the action that violates God's laws. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. And then that, that next quote there, um, he said, zeal for law with the mentality of self-preservation caused Israel to become narrow-minded and nearsighted. Um, preoccupied with boundary markers distinguishing them from the Gentiles, such as circumcision and food laws, they lost sight of the truly central concerns of the law and their mission to the nations. Um, I just, like, I kind of thought about, uh, you know, what he says there. And I, he, so narrow-minded. Um, and I've just kind of... It, this thought po process has kind of come on the last few days um, that we can become so focused on certain things that we're kind of missing what exactly was going on. Like we can be just so, I, you know, Adam and I, it may seem like an odd conversation to you guys, but <laughs> Adam and I were having a conversation the other day about, um, about religion and all the different splits in the church and how um, a lot of it has come from, you know, just trying to, to counteract what someone else has said. And instead of, you know, maybe taking some of the, you know, the truths that they had, um, it, they've just kind of sided themselves on the other side. And it's like, it's like not really a, 
Like we're just so focused on this, we want to be just the opposite of them, whether that's good or bad, you know. And so we're just like, f- there's a, that focus. And I just, you know, it's just been kind of a thought on my brain the last couple of days of what exactly am I just so focused on that I'm losing the big picture? Is there anything in my life right now that I'm just so narrow focused on that I'm losing exactly what it is that God was calling me towards? That's good. And I think that. So a lot of times we get we get focused on what divides us, mm-hmm. right? Like you say, as you were pointing out, we get focused on the things that are divisive because if they're different than what I believe, or if it's different, if they're acting differently than what I think is appropriate action, or it, whatever, whatever the the issue might be. If we fo- we, if we focus on the divisive instead of the where we have common ground, mm-hmm. but we're gonna the, the division is gonna grow, a hundred percent. And so what we see is instead of finding common ground that we can grow together in and and learn how to deal with the, the tension of disagreement but yet still be focused on as as great house quote points out there the mission um that we are on which is to share the love of jesus christ it is dang near impossible to share the love of jesus christ when what you're focused on is what is dividing you from from a different person and so the world sees that we're in the church when we're focused on Whatever is whatever another church believes differently about us, and that becomes our focus, and and we just can't seem to get that set and straight, and we just are angry, and we're like, how can people go to that church, and and different things like that. The, the world sees that our focus is not on them, on loving them. It sees that it's focused on some sort of division that they don't have anything to do with. Mm-hmm. Like we've got to figure out how to find common ground with people in every area that we interact with them, mm-hmm. especially within the church. Well, and that's it, you know, not to, you know, to go, oh, Wesley had it so right. But, you know, in in learning the history of that, like to find that Wesley went, okay, so maybe I don't agree here, but I agree to this point, you know. And, like, in Wesley wasn't against saying that. Like, I, you know, I just, I'm not willing to cross that line right there. That's, you know, I agree with him to this point, but n- just not on that point. And so, you know, he wasn't, he was willing to look at the, the full picture and not just try to place himself on the other side of that argument. And so it was just kind of something that ran through my head the last couple of days. And um, as I read that, that quote he put up there, it just really kind of rang true to me from what my thoughts were from the last couple of days. Um, so moving on there, you know, it, in verse 3, um, it says that uh, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Um, and Great House was great to point this out. He said God's righteousness is, not a, is a gift, not a human achievement. And then he went on to say to attain the righteousness that is by faith, requires that we submit to God's righteousness. And um, he goes on to say, righteousness is personified as a power whose authority we must acknowledge. In reality, we must submit to the God who chooses to include all who believe among his people, not just the Jews. Yeah, I mean, like... (laughs) This is why, so as Nazarenes, we have an open table of communion. It's open to everybody uh, who, who believes, right? If you believe in Jesus, come and eat. <laughs> come and sh- partake in the, in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Come and partake in this shared belief that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Um, that's, that's, what, and that's, that's what righteousness is, at least in this point of this, what we're talking about, that just because the Jews disagreed with the Gentiles about some things doesn't mean that God is not the God of all, mm-hmm. right? And just because I might disagree with what a, a Baptist pastor preaches on a, on, on a particular very you know, secluded passage in the Bible uh, doesn't mean that we can't share a communion together. It doesn't mean that we can't be on mission together in our community. And so like, we have these, these divisions that pop up, and we lose our righteousness when we focus on divisiveness on what is separating us rather than what the common ground of Jesus Christ as Lord actually means. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's exactly right. 
I feel <laughs> nothing to add. You, <laughs> you got it. I've, I've got been thinking it. a lot about divisiveness lately. Like I, this, so this is lining up. And I didn't do much reading on this before we came together. So like when I read through it as I was reading at the beginning, I'm like reading it, like boom, like this is it's like, all, yeah. oh, it's hidden. Oh, and so, it's but this is right on for our world today. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. It's amazing how how God kind of does that. Like I had conversations, you know, a few days ago with Adam about you know, how we, we tend to lose our focus and we tend to focus on one thing instead of the whole, mm -hmm. like the whole thing. And like, and so as I was going through this and kind of reading through the commentary and putting this all together, I was like, wow, like God had me thinking about this, you know, a few days ago, like, you know, and it's amazing how it really, truly, it shouldn't surprise me, but it does like every time <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. the way God works in that, um, so moving on just a little bit, um, in the NIV, it says in verse 4, Christ is the, the, the culmination, I'm not going to, culmination, gonna, culmination, I was like, oh, I'm so focused on this word, I'm going to butcher it, <laughs> that's my focus right there, um, but some of the versions say end, mm -hmm. um, but it's just really like the fulfillment. So kind of like hearkening back to some of the other scriptures where, he cr where Jesus said, I'm the fulfillment of the law. Um, so it's the, the, he's the fulfillment of the law. Um, Meaning that all that has transpired before this is now coming to a completion in Jesus Christ, right? right. Like right. that, it's 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 not that it doesn't matter anymore. It's that all that it's it's continuing, continuing, continuing. Jesus fulfills all of that, and then He continues on right. in that fulfillment. Right. Yep. Yeah. Good yep. stuff. Um, and then so there in verses like five through eight, Paul brings up. It's a little some, weird. Yes, Paul brings up some of these scriptures, and so. Um, he in verse uh, he brings up this verse in Levit from Leviticus 18:5 and in that verse there's kind of a debate between faith and law and so to bring together his his whole argument he brings up this passage in Deuteronomy um, to kind of to kind of counteract to bring to around his whole argument um, and that kind of all comes around in a head in verse and so I want to read it just again for us. Um, but what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. And so this word that Paul is talking about, this word is the word of faith. Um, and Paul points out there, you know, that it is, um, the word is near you, it's in your mouth, and in your heart. And so, to me, you know, that's, a, he's pointing out, you know, this is a, this is a heart change. Um, mm -hmm. This isn't just a, you know, you've done your to-do list, this is a heart change. Sure. Um, and there, Again, I've got another uh, quote from Great House. Paul's preaching rejects the possibility of achieving right righteousness by preoccupation with maintaining Jewish uh, particularity, scaling the heights or plumbing the depths. Depths, sorry. Righteousness by faith involves the simple announcement of what God has done in Christ in an affirmative inner response and outward public acknowledgement of this truth righteousness is simple like it's not easy like i i've said this in a lot of time like the, the the steps that we need to take towards faith they're not always easy it's it's hard to give up and sacrifice some of the things that god calls us to give up it's hard to start doing things that god calls us to do but yet it's still simple right and so like in these jewish people that were that were like, I, I, love how, I like how he puts it, trying to scale the heights of the law, trying to plumb the depths of the law, like trying to just get all the nitty gritty out of there. And there's some people, and I'm one of them, and I think you are too, Marcia, that like to study in depth and really get into these things. But that's not necessary for righteousness. It's necessary for growth, I think, in our faith. Um, and some people are going are gonna to go farther than others in that, um, in their study. But 
the reality of righteousness, to be able to stand righteous before God, is simple to take what he has done as a reality in your heart and then live it out. That's it. Like that's that's all that you have to do for the right to, to, to attain the righteousness of God. And again, that's not a view, that's what God has done inside of you. You just have to agree with it and accept it and then live it out. And that's I, I love how he puts that. So I think that's good. Well, and so, so there, you know, as we kind of come around into what Paul talks about, you know, through salvation, uh, he says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And just a little side note on that, um, that whole Jesus is lo- Lord. So Paul is talking to the church in Rome. Um, and so at that time, they would have called Caesar Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in saying that Jesus is Lord, you are directly saying that Caesar is not Lord. <laughs> and, and so we've got to kind of remember who he's talking to as he, as he, say, as he says this. Um, you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And then there I wanted to point out, it says, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved believe in your heart. Paul didn't say believed at one point. Believe. It's an onward, it's a continuous thing. Like a current tense, not a past tense. And there in 10, he said, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith that you are saved. Again, it's a current tense. It's not a past tense, like not that you professed your faith and now, you know, but this is something that continues on. You continue on to believe. You continue on to profess your faith. So I, I, that's, that's really good. And so for a, from a pastor's perspective, and, you, and you'll, you'll start to see this too, the more ministry that you do, the more people that you um, lead to the Lord that, that, uh, that do profess their faith, you know, Yes, I believe Jesus is Lord. I ask that he say, come into my heart, live in my heart, save my soul sins. And then you never hear their testimony ever again. That's, that's a problem. Like we have to continue to profess. We have to continue to believe. We have to continue to see God doing things in our lives and so that we can, we can continue to tell the people that God brings, us, or brings to us as opportunities to share our faith that, hey, this, this is still happening. God is still saving me. Like, I, think, I, I forget where I've heard this from. You've probably read it as in your books as well. But God has saved us, is saving us, and will save us, right? Like, it's all, ha- and it's, and it's, so it's all part of that process. And so if we're not continually being saved by Jesus Christ, past, present, and then what we know is coming in the future, that we will continue to be saved, um, something's wrong. Maybe there's something that's not right in your relationship with Jesus Christ, and you've got to get on your knees. And again, it's not about just a praying a prayer one time and being good. It's about having that ongoing relationship with Jesus Christ, and that's what this is talking about. To believe and profess is that ongoing. Like Rachel and I, you and Adam, you believe in each other, and you continue to profess your love for one another, right? Mm-hmm. I hope, Adam. Sometimes, <laughs> we'll work. We'll work on you. Okay. It's important, though, that we continue to profess that relationship. And then it's even more important with with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, and there, you know, in verse 10, he said, For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. Um, And then, uh, or Greathouse said, The repetition of the heart language from the Deuteronomy text indicates that Paul understands conversion as necessarily involving human emotions and deep convictions, not merely the reciting of a creed. Mm -hmm. It's an actual heart change, not just saying, I believe Jesus is Lord, that's my profession, and I'm done. Like, it's a heart change. It's a real, it's a change. It's, you know, it has emotions. It has these deep convictions, as he says. You know, this this all kind of comes around, and Paul's saying, this isn't just a, you know, check on your checklist. Like, this is a deep heart change. And that, and so that's where, too, the, 
the mouth and the heart have to line up, mm -hmm. right? It's it's not one or the other. Like people have read this verse, if you declare with your mouth, or sorry, verse 10, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, with your mouth that you profess and are saved. As scripture says, verse 11, anyone who believes in him will never be to shame. All of that lines up and then they say, well, they say they believe in God. Okay, believing in God is fine, but do you also believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? Like that's that's the the whoa part that's like did god actually raise jesus christ his son born of a virgin from the dead and do you believe that and do you testify to that because i i think i i don't know how anyone can say there is no god there is no intelligent designer intelligent creator like i just i don't i don't get that right so but that's a whole other story so i think it's easy to say yeah i believe there's a god do you believe that that God also raised Jesus from the dead? Because both things, you have to believe that and you have to profess that. And, that's, and it's so necessary for both elements of that belief to be there and then both elements of the, of the faith, to believe and to speak it. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's like, you know, like you pointed out, like the heart in the mouth, it's, you know, I don't remember right off the top of my head which scripture it is but it's out of the overflow of the heart James, yeah. um the mouth speaks and even as you know we look back in the old testament so ezekiel you know when he's having that that moment um when the you know god's train filled the temple um he said i'm a man of unclean lips like meaning you know like uh, what you know what is coming out of my overflow of my heart and the people around me, we're, we have, we're unclean mm -hmm. um, just from what's coming in our heart. Yeah. Um, and so there's always been that kind of, that heart and mouth kind of um, put together. Yeah, they can, and there's a connection yeah, for yeah. sure. Yep, definitely. Mm -hmm. And so um, another thing I want to point out there as we kind of wrap up this section of 10 um, but I want to point out that Paul says there, uh, he's quoting scripture um, from Joel, but he says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I, he's told but, what if, but what if God's already said that they can't be saved? <sighs> I just don't get it. I know. I know. <laughs> just kidding. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> Nobody send me nasty emails. Okay. But Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord yeah, be saved. Yeah, it says everyone. And so, you know, Paul's point at this point was everyone, like not just the Jewish people who call, you know, like the Gentiles. Like this is an everyone kind of thing. Yep. No one is excluded from this. And he's, you know, he's even bringing back, you know, a scripture from Joel to make his point for this, um, that everyone. Which lines everyone, up with what you taught us last week that, um, that the Jews missed the mark right. of Jesus. They, 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 they missed, missed out on, the, on who the Messiah on. was going to mm -hmm. be and, that, and what the Messiah was going to do to save for God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's really good. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, so um, let's go on there and read. I do want to just oh, stop real quick. Yes. So if you haven't highlighted that verse, if you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, uh, if you know that you haven't given your heart to God, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Would you take a moment right now and, and, and just you can pause the video and just call on the name of Jesus? There's power in the name of Jesus. We believe that. And everyone who calls on his name will be saved. Calling on his name allows you, allows him access into your heart to be able to get you to the point where you can believe in God, also believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, to save us from our sins. That's this, this is your opportunity, guys. So I, I was, I felt like I'd just say, like, pause the video, call in the name of Jesus, and let him change you from the inside out. All right. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and read um, verses 14 through 21. And 14 and 15, verses 14 and 15, just point, they, these are my uh, call to pastor verses. Like, this is what I... I uh, settled on as a sophomore in college way back when before I even answered the call to become one like this is what led me to say I've got I've got to be this kind of person so verse 14 how then can they call on the one they have not believed in 
And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Again, I ask, did Israel not understand? First, Moses says, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. And Isaiah boldly says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says, all day long, I have held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Paul's really... Like there's some pretty giving it to the Jews. Yes, he is. He is. Um, so in the very beginning, there in verses 14 through um, in 15, you know, he's once again bringing us this this these questions, like one question after another. And so, but Paul is really posing the question: Whose fault is this? that the Jews, you know, missed this part, this part of the roadmap. Like they, they mi- you know, they missed this part. Like whose fault is that? And so then he kind of goes into, uh, is it God's fault? Um, is it the preachers of the gospel's fault? Or is it simply, simply Israel's fault? Um, where was this bre- where did this breakdown happen mm-hmm. is kind of what paul is kind of pushing there as he goes through those questions and i think that ties in for our our world today mm-hmm. like uh you know we we can get into this mindset of you know uh man the, the gospel's been made known to everybody and so but there are so many people out there i beyond blessed i have heard the gospel message of Jesus Christ from day one of my life, right, till now. So, like, you want to talk about privilege, I've got every kind of privilege you could possibly have, right? And so I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm glad that I got to know Jesus Christ uh, at the age that I did and know about God at the age that I did. But there are so many people who have, who have had opportunities to hear about Jesus, sure, but we have to continue to, 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 to preach the, and live the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that they can continue to hear about him. Like it's, we get to the thing where like, well, they've had enough chances. Or they're not the kind of people we want to be around. And the reality is the gospel, the, the Christian faith is about those who aren't good enough. Right? That, that's, uh, the, the Christian faith is about those that are, that's why, you know, and I, and I read an article today that talked about um, Christians being hypocrites. The reality is like we are because we're not good enough. Like, we know that we need to be saved. Like, if we think that Christians can become this perfect, nothing is going to mess us up, nothing we're going to do, we're going to do everything exactly right, uh, then, then, then we aren't Christians. Like, we don't, we're not understanding that, the, that we need a Savior, that we haven't, out, we haven't outgrown our need for Jesus, right? And so while we believe in holiness and living a holy life and following after the path of Jesus, which helps to put our our actions in the right place the truth is we if we ever stop believing that we need jesus or that it's through the power of the holy spirit that jesus sent that that we can even come close to accomplishing that we're, we're already off track and then that's the gospel message that we need to preach to everybody out there that jesus loves you right where you're at let's get into that relationship because you don't have to be perfect to get into it with jesus mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that's sorry yeah, well, and he meets, you know, he meets us exactly where we are mm-hmm. and leads us. I mean, like I told you, you know, I've been going through, I just finished that spiritual formation class. And we talked about, you know, the road to Emmaus and how Jesus met um, the disciples on the road to Emmaus where they were mm-hmm. and had this conversation with them and really asked some questions that kind of brought up really exactly how they were feeling and 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 jesus you know eventually led them down and opened up their eyes you know as they came into the house and broke the bread and and had this meal with jesus they you know finally he finally opened their eyes and it was like it's to realize that jesus met them where they were and there were so many people in the bible there's so many stories where jesus meets them 
where they are and then brings them along into this understanding. It's, it's amazing. And here we think, you know, people should only come if they've made it this far. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, we need to meet people where they are. And stay with them on the journey. Right. Because that's because if Jesus is in us, Jesus is with us as we're with them. And we're going to stay on that journey with them and their eyes will be opened. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Um, sorry, we kind of yeah. <laughs> got we went on with a little. Led. Yeah. So um, kind of coming back to that, um, you know, in that co those questions that Paul is kind of bringing up, um, God had already set the process in motion and, you know, had preachers of the gospel and Israel had heard it. Um, so it was really the problem was was Israel's knowing. Um, and even here, he said, you know, that that God had given them the knowledge that the Z Gentiles were going to be grafted in. And also God told them that they would have a problem with it. This is their jealous zeal that they would have, kind of hearkening back to um, to what Paul talks about at the very beginning. Their zeal is not based on knowledge. Um, and so he, you know, as it goes through, um, but not all the Israelites accepted the good news. And, you know, they're where it's consequently faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard throughout the word about through the word about Christ. But I asked, did they not hear? Of course they did. And then he throws out this, you know, this scripture that he's he's bringing back in. Their voice had gone out into all the world, their words to the end of the world. Um, and again, I asked, did Israel not understand? And then he brings up this, you know, um, Moses says, I will make you envious of those who are not a nation. And I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. And something I, I didn't know um, before reading through this, um, there in verse 19, um, but a nation. So the Greek word for Gentiles actually is translated, or that's translated Gentiles, means nations. Um, and so, is, you know, those who are not a nation, so Gentiles, and I'll make you angry by a nation, so Gentiles, that has no understanding. He's, you know, he's, Paul's pointing out there, like, you knew this was coming. Like, and you still, I, you knew that this angry, you know, will, I will make you angry. Um, they're going to have that jealous zeal. Um, the fact that these Gentiles are coming in on what they feel is their territory, you know. And, um, and so there it says, well, I'm sorry, I'm kind of skipping around a little bit. Um, but there in verse, uh, in verse 16, um, not all the Israelites accepted the good news. Um, and it brings up the scripture from Isaiah where Paul, or is Great House said, um, Paul presents the present situations with that in Isaiah's day. Israel's problem is not the gospel, but the refu its refusal to believe or obey God. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, the, the, the reality is anytime we, and it's a simple, for us right now, I think that to, to say something like, um, you know, if I disagree with the Bible, if I disagree with the Word of God, I'm the one that's wrong, right? And what I've found in my life is that when I have disagreed with the Bible or when I have found myself separated from God because of my lack of, of spiritual discipline or even if there's something that was really going on in my life that was like, I just, I'm not down with this and I'm not following after God. What I've found in that is that then my whole attitude towards the world is off, right? And so even if there's something I know that's true in the Bible, because my relationship with God is not right, that area it will be like shut off to me. And so I think that's this, these, the Jews here, as they're, as they're thinking through 
Well, no, this can't. The, the, it's for us. We are Abraham's children. This is for us. It can't be for anybody else. And then even though they know this stuff, it goes against what they want. And so what they want wins out, and they shut off God. And so then they're just closed off. Jews still to this day closed off from believing that Jesus is the Messiah for all the world. Yeah, they're so they're so caught on this this thought that they're losing the whole the big picture. picture. You know, just like um, Greenhouse said, you know, we talked about his quote early on. They lost sight of the truly central concerns of the law and their mission to Mm -hmm. the nations. Yep. Yep. They were supposed to be the ones that that brought everybody into a relationship with God. And they just, they drop the ball, mm-hmm. as we do, unfortunately, from time to time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, kind of to, uh, you know, finish up there, and sorry again I, for you guys out there that I kind of <laughs> skipped around in my notes just a little bit. Uh, but then, you know, in 20, and I, Isaiah boldly says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. Once again, that's kind of Paul's, you know, making his argument that the Gentiles were always in this. Um, they were planned for. Right, right. And so the, you know, it can't be, it can't be an argument that they didn't understand this. It can't be an argument that, um, God, you know, didn't tell them or didn't give him them enough, you know, uh, people to come out and spread the gospel. And, you know, this isn't the argument. It's truly that they're not, they're choosing not to um, realize this, to have knowledge of it. Um, and then, you know, there in 21, uh, but concerning Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. There's your hope. There's your hope. He continues to hold out his hand. Mm-hmm. Continues to hold out his hand, even though Israel messed up. Even though we mess up, and we whether it's our own actions that's uh, for to cause our disobedience, or because we're not loving the world or the people that God gives us opportunities to love, we're not loving them well as Christ followers, as we should then the, he's still holding out his hand saying, come on, follow me, follow me, just do do this. It's so simple. I'll teach you how to do the things you don't think you can. I'll give you the strength to do the things you don't think you can or the things you don't want to, but I promise you my way is better. And he's holding his hand out, waiting for us to just grab it and follow along. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so... Um Yeah, we, you know, there are times where we're going to be a little caught with with what we think, you know, we'll be a little focused on, you know, without missing the bigger kind of picture, and we'll kind of be focused. Um, but the great thing is, is we can, you know, just be like, Lord, make sure that I'm not focusing on the things that I only want to focus on, and that, you know, I'm still looking at this bigger picture and he is so faithful. He will do that. He will, you know, he will remind us what the bigger picture is uh, instead of just having us focus on whatever it is that we want to focus on. I think that's your that's your kind of closing thought there yeah. is challenging our focus. You know, are you focused on something that makes you angry about someone else who claims to be a follower of Jesus Christ? Or are you focusing on, you know, being on mission with people? so that we can get more people into the kingdom of God, into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, that and, you know, kind of fits into the whole question I had talked about earlier, just a little bit how we need to check our zeal, mm-hmm. like with where we're going with that, with the good, or are we really kind of going in the bad in the bad direction? Um, where's our zeal? And, and are we too focused on certain things? Are we getting a little too f- zealous about our own things and not zealous enough about what God is calling us towards. That's good. Yeah. Well, thanks guys for, for watching with us. I hope you enjoyed that discussion of Romans chapter 10. 
uh, this is just good stuff. And so if you you know if you're watching tonight and you, you realize you haven't watched all, go back and watch. They're all on YouTube or on Facebook. You can get to them and 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 uh, watch them and you know let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to pray for your requests. So drop those in the comments as well. Marcy, why don't you close us out in prayer tonight? Lord, we just are so grateful that that righteousness is kind of this simple thing that we can call out to you and we can profess your name and say, Jesus, Lord, come into a relationship with you. And while things that may get kind of hard because you ask us to, um, you form us, you start to form us, that we can still have that relationship with you. I'm just so grateful that we get to have that relationship with you. I'm just absolutely grateful for that right now. Lord, I just am thankful for that you show us, your, you reveal to us yourself through the word of God, through your word, through you in the word. Lord, I just pray that you just continue to open up our hearts and our minds to what it is that you want us to learn out of this. And Lord, I just pray that you just continue to bring this back to our mind um, through this upcoming week and into next week. And Lord, I just pray that if there's something that we are too focused on, that we are missing the big picture, that you just pointed it out to us. Lord, I'm just grateful that you do that. Grateful that we can come to you and ask you to do that. Lord, I just pray that you continue to be with us this week. Um, just continue to show yourself and, and continue to, to help us be formed into the image of to what it is that you have called us towards, what our purpose is. Lord, we just thank you for that. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.